ready to present for you European explorers in the new world. They're gonna tell you everything you needed to know about who really discovered the new world and who got the credit for it. So without further ado, the fourth grade are gonna present their play. Thank you. Quiet everyone, five seconds to air. Three, two. Welcome to a special edition of Bum Bum Bum! The best new show ever. I'm Isabel Scurvy. We've got a breaking news story. The Bum Bum Bum! Best new show ever team has discovered a flood of people sailing away from Europe to uncharted destinations. Where are they going? What are they hoping to find? How long will they be gone? Can I house it for them in August? We'll explore these and other important questions tonight on... On... Oh, sorry. Bum, bum, bum! The best new show ever. Now to our reporter on the scene, Sylvia Scoop. Sylvia, where are you and what is going on? Hi, Isabel. I'm here in the middle of... in the middle of the 15th century. Here with me is Prince Henry, the, the patron of Portuguese exploration. Tell me, Henry, you like to navigate? Who, me? No, I can't stand it. You won't catch me on one of those ships, floating death traps. And why do they call you the Navigator? My mother gave me that name because when I was born, I had a birthmark on my back shaped exactly like a map of the Mediterranean Sea. Really? No. <laughs> I'm, a <pri> <laughs> I'm a prince. I send others along the west coast of Africa, spread Christianity, make new maps, find trade routes. I love to trade. I'll give you a shiny trinket for that microphone. I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. This belongs to... Bum, bum, bum! The best new the best news show ever. <laughs> what was that? I have to get me one of those. Never mind. Back to the trade routes. You traded with Africa? At first, but in 1453, when the Turks took over Constantinople, we Europeans pretty much lost all land routes to the east. We had to find a new way to get to the silk, spices, and wealth of the east by sailing around Africa. And you did that? No, I told you. I hate ships. Sail right off the edge of the world. Um, <laughs> but. Over, over 40 years after my death, my countryman, Vasco da Gama, reached India. And so that explains the flood of people leaving Europe. They're getting on a ship and heading east. No. No. Columbus. Oh my gosh, Isabel. I found Columbus right here in the middle of Ohio. 
It's like such a great city. I've made so many friends. But it's kind of weird, you know, because like there's not an ocean anywhere around. No, I mean Christopher Columbus. No way. You mean that old Spanish guy who sailed on the three ships, the Fresca, the Latte, and the Pina Colada? I'm Italian, not Spanish, and my ships were not beverages. Two of my ships, the Nina and the Pinta, were called caravels. They were smaller ships that could sail better into the wind. My own vessel was the larger Santa Maria, although it ran aground off the coast of Hispaniola. Cool. So who are you? I'm Christopher Columbus. I sailed to the New World, although I admit I thought I'd reach East Indies and China. You, you should get a GPS. I have one on my ankle so I can always find myself. I claim many lands for Spain. After my first voyage, Portugal and Spain tried signed a treaty to divide the new Western Territory with an imaginary line, the line of demarcation through the Atlantic. All the lands to the east of the line were Portugal's. All the lands to the west belonged to Spain. Wait a minute. If you're Italian, how come you sail for Spain? And what did you eat? Do they even allow a pizza on a Spanish ship or when you get in trouble? My request for funding was rejected by the crowns of France, England, Portugal, and Italy. Even King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain made me wait six years until they had completed the Reconquista, the long war between Christian kingdoms and Muslim wars over control of the Iberian Peninsula. Finally, in 1492... Wait, wait, I know this one. In 1492, you sailed the ocean blue, although it's kind of a lame rhyme. Ocean blue? Who says that? It should be something like in 1492, Columbus sailed a big canoe. Or how about in 1493, Columbus sailed a big blue sea? I think it's okay to change history if it makes the rhymes better. I did make a second trip in 1493, and also in 1498 and 1502. I thought that I only had to sail 3,000 miles westward to reach Asia and all the golden spices waiting in Japan and the Spice Islands. But it was more like 12,000 miles with a couple of unknown continents and a lot of islands in the way. You thought, I, I never did figure out just what went wrong. You thought the Caribbean was Asia? Couldn't you tell by the reggae music? Hey, I didn't know. <laughs> Sophie Spectacle. 
So, what's the buzz out there, Sophie? Exciting news, Isabel. I'm here in Germany in 1507, where a map maker has just named a new continent after an up-and-coming Florentine explorer. The crowds love this rising superstar. Oh, I think I see him now. Touch him up right there. See, there's a smudge. It's his smudge. I'm never going to wash this now. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm so respectful. With... Bum, bum, bum! The best new show ever. Are you Vespucci? Yes, Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci. Wow, they named America after him. I want to name this place Vespucci Land, but America Vespucci. He sailed several times to South America and claimed that whole bump on the eastern side for Portugal. Wait, but didn't Columbus sail several years before you? Why are you hating on America? <laughs> and what about Pedro? What about Pedro Carbell? Didn't he get blown off course and bump to Brazil too? Stop who will the facts, you're freaking me out. I figured out this place wasn't Asia at all, but a new continent. I sailed up and down the coast looking for a passage through. But hey, you don't have to be the first to be the best. I'm not the first to cross the ocean. I'm not the first to fill the gap. But I still off by one to hit a continent. And now my name is on the map. Cold. Cold all day. Cold all night. 
basically called 24-7. The National Weather Bureau predicts a change by midweek where it will be really cold. I've invited two early explorers of North America to give us some weather tips. John Cabot and Jacques Cartier. Tell me, John, what was the weather like when you lived in Newfoundland in 1497? It was cold, Sonny, but that didn't stop me. We're looking, I was, we were looking to, for a p passage through the mainland of North America. Now it's called the Northwest Passage. At the time, we didn't know what it was. We just knew it was there somewhere. I was the first European to sail to the mainland of North America. You mean the second? I gave you a chance for an interview, Leif. So you were sailing for England, right? Yes, for King Henry the Seventh. But it's true the French were really out hustled us in this kind of thing. Is that true? Well, I came a bit later. But in the 1530s, I claimed a good deal of Canadian land for France. We French began a very lucrative fur trade with the natives. And I found the first European colony in North America. You mean the second? Leap, I'm warning you. I too was looking for a path through the Americas to the east. What were you guys hoping to find? Gold? Silver? Silk? Not me. Nor I. You must understand, 16th century, we had nothing to prepare our food with. It went bad fast. It was horrible. We needed something to keep our food fresh and make it taste better. Especially, Especially the meat. meat.
in 1513, we were the first Europeans to see the eastern shore of what is now called the Pacific Ocean. And all we had to do was follow the natives. Follow me. Zuma here, Bizarre in Peru came here in the 1530s and wiped my entire tribe out. It was Hernan Cortez in Mexico about a decade earlier who finished me off. It was the end of our brilliant and brutal dominion. Which leaves me with just one question. Who booked you guys for the show? You were both dead. I mean, this is Happy Health, and you were both dead, and you were killed by conquistadors. To be honest, we're not really victims here. We Aztecs and Incas conquered millions of people and practiced human sacrifice. Thousands of our local enemies joined the Spaniards to defeat us. This is not happy. Not happy at all. Welcome to the 16th century. This was the time when the Spanish Inquisition really got cooking. Life was tough all over. A tragedy. It really tears your heart out. You mean that phrase literally, don't you? That's a figurative use. It was empire versus empire. We lost. Sure, if we had technology, we probably would have sailed to Europe and taken their stuff. What do they have in Europe worth taking? Our gold! Oh, right. So it was the Spaniards' technological superiority that led them to victory? They had guns and cannons, well honed battle skills, and tactics. And horses, too. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. As a health reporter, Wendy, you'll love our story. Sure, that's probably why they booked us to be on the show. Is this going to be happy? Nope.
back with another in-depth interview with another famous explorer. So, Jenny, I hope you had better luck this time. Did you have? Did you find Cornando? Absolutely, Isabel. What a beautiful little resort island. I just love San Diego. The hotel is like fabulous. I got a massage and... Wait, wait, wait. You were supposed to find Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, the Spanish conquistador. Geez, Isabel, how many of these European explorers are there? I gave you a list to track down in this morning's reading. But those were all old dead guys. <laughs> That's what our show is about. Look at this list. What about LaSalle? The university? No, the explorer that claimed the French and Ohio... No, no, claimed the Mississippi and Ohio Valleys for France. What about Champlain? I thought that was a lake. <laughs> Named after one of the first men to establish a permanent French colony in the Americas. DeSoto? I know that one. That's a car. Which has been made since 1960. Oh. That explains all the weirdly dressed Spanish guys who, want, who wanted to clear something up about history. They were all like, blah, 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 they DeSoto about some important stuff they wanted to clear up about history. See, look, there they are now. Sorry I've been trying to get you guys. I didn't know you were famous. We're not famous. My friend Pedro and I were soldiers at Fernando de Soto. Yeah, we followed him for months through what's now known as the Southern Eastern United States. We found nothing. No gold, no silver, nothing. Well, except for the Mississippi River. We were the first Europeans to cross that. We heard you guys were digging up European explorers of the New World, and we wanted to set the record straight. There was a lot of exploration in the U.S. inner area that went nowhere. Same with us. Just when you guys were plodding around with DeSoto in the 1540s, Miguel and I were trudging through the southwest of Coronado. He had some genius idea about finding a legendary seventh day of gold. I think the natives were just messing with us on that one. Yeah, they lived in Mucklowos. That should have been a clue. You'd think they upgraded the gold if they knew where the seven cities are. A lot of marshes and nothing. Well, at least we weren't following into the the swamps of Florida with Ponce de Leon, looking for the fountain of youth. My feet still hurt 450 years later. <laughs> left Spain in 1519. We weren't mentally prepared. We thought we'd find the Southwest Passage through the Americas to the ocean on the other side. We came up a little bit short. What was it? Too many off the field distractions? Nagging injuries? Did your team not stay hungry? Oh, trust me. We were hungry. All the time. <laughs> Turnovers killed us though. A couple of my ships deserted. We lost our focus. We sailed all the way around the tip of South America and into the Pacific Ocean, but we never came together as a team. And then you were killed in the Philippines! Those natives just made the big plays and we didn't. They hustled us. But one of your ships, 
18 of the original 277 on your tube did make it across the Pacific and back to Spain to become the first men to sail around the globe. They gave 110% pay and the guys have nothing to be ashamed of. They're scrappy players and I'm glad they'll be returning, but it's still going to be a rebuilding year. So what's ahead for you now, coach? Well, I'm dead, of course, and I seem to have lost a step or two. It's a business, Peyton. I get that. It's all about the winning and the losing. But I'm looking forward to spending more time with my family. Thanks, coach. That was Ferdinand Magellan, the wily veteran and the shoe-in for the Explorers Hall of Fame. He named the Pacific Ocean and the passage around South America the Strait of Magellan. Now, let's talk to the winning team from England, Francis Drake and his crew members from the ship, the goal is behind. Congrats, Coach Drake, congr congratulations for the big win in England in 1580. Sure, thanks. We heard how that happened though, right? A win is a win, Coach. We just wanted to sail around South America and steal the silver from the Spanish ships in the Pacific. We, we just want to be pirates. But you were the first man to command a complete voyage around the globe. We didn't really need to do that. Nah, but once we robbed the Spanish ships off Peru, we figured it was easier to keep going than to go through the Spanish fleet. We sailed north past California, couldn't find a passage eastward to America, so we headed west to the Spice Islands, and after three years, made it back to England. We were heroes and stuff. Who oh, no. knew? Captain here even got a knighthood. Later, as Vice Admiral of the English Navy, he boarded the Spanish Armada that was attempting to invade England. But really, I, I just, just want to be a pirate. pirate. I think that could be arranged. <laughs> Thank you. 
for their brilliant reporting. Sylvia Scoop, a reporter on the scene for our latest scoop. Special assignments reporter Jennifer Ravioli for her trendy updates. Sophie Spectacle, our entertainment reporter. Sunny Days for our her most accurate forecast possible. Wendy Wellness for her happy health report. And Peyton Pastime for our exciting teams, Explore Team Scores. From all of us at... Bum, bum, bum! The best news show ever. I'm Isabel Scurvy. Thanks for watching and don't forget to eat some vitamin C. Thank you so much, fourth grade. That was wonderful. It was really nice to see all of your smiles and the joy that you took in this um, performance. It really made it special. Um, thank you for all the information about the explorers, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Appreciate it. Um, special thanks to Ms. Steinberg for her help with this show. Couldn't have done it without her. Um, to the fourth grade teachers who helped and supported all of this, they, thanks to them as well. Thanks to the parents, thanks to the audience, and of course, again, mostly thanks to the fourth grade. Have a great day and a wonderful spring break. Mr. McNaughton, thanks to you too for the lighting and the sound, much appreciated. All right, thank you, have a great day. All right, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful spring break. And lower school, you can head back. Parents, they'll stay here for just a couple of seconds while the lower school leaves and then you can send your greetings to your children.